Hi friends, welcome back to your mini lesson for today. Today we are going to continue hitting the same learning targets we've been doing for both our read aloud and for our mini lesson, which I'm sure you have memorized by now. So if you do, you can go ahead and read these learning targets with me. They say, I can analyze characters of a story. That means that we can look at the characters, talk about their facial expressions, the actions that they're doing, what they're doing in the story to help us understand it better. Let's read the next one. I can name the setting of a story. So we can tell when we're reading our story, where the story takes place and when it takes place. So to help us do those things, we've been practicing visualizing in our brain, okay? So when we say we visualize, we picture it in our brains. We picture it in our head, the story. So the things that we're thinking about are the characters. So let's go over what characters are. I want you to listen and repeat. Characters, characters are the, are the people, people, animals, animals, and things, and things in a story, in a story. So we have examples of all of those on our chart here. David and Trixie, Piggy and Elephant, the Crayons and Nuffle Bunny. And today in your read aloud, you'll see the story of the little blue truck has two types of characters. There aren't any people characters in that story, but there are animals and there's a thing. And that one thing, that one character is the little blue truck. So those are different types of characters that can be in a story. Before we look at our setting, let's sing our character song to help us remember who the characters are and why they're important. So show me your W arms and let's sing our character song. Ready? A one, a two, a one, two, three. A characters who's in the story, a characters who's in the story, a characters who's in the story, a character is who. Good. So our character is characters are who the story is about. We also visualize and use the setting to help us understand a story better. So we say that a setting is when and where a story takes place. It's both of those things. So let's sing our setting song to help us remember why a setting is important to us. Ready? A one, a two, a one, two, three. The setting is when and where. The setting is when and where. The setting is when and where a story takes place. So not only when it happens, but also where it happens. And let's go over some examples of what you could be looking for as a reader. It could be during the day, night, winter, spring, summer, fall, or just the time of day could be given to you, like at lunchtime, noon, dinner, those things. Some examples of where a story could take place is at home, the desert, the city, the farm, the ocean, or the playground, and many, many more. These are just examples of where we know stories take place and when they could take place. So yesterday in our mini lesson, we read the story of, da da da, -da the Three Little Pigs. Let's give that story a round of applause. Great story, great story. And we made connections to the book before we even did it as readers, right? We said, oh, most of us knew that story already. So we drew from our schema and we decided, ooh, we know that there are characters in this story that are important and we know the things that they do, the actions that they do in the story, such as running from a wolf. We know that there's some blowing going on by the wolf trying to knock those houses down. So today we are going to do a quick picture walk to remind us of the story, the characters in the setting, and then we're going to make a chart of character traits. Our character traits are made up of the actions and the, um, the expressions and how the characters act in the story. So thinking about which characters were nice, which ones were mean, which ones were scared. How do we know that? What did they do? Okay, so let's do a quick picture walk of the story. So we know at the beginning of the story that the three little pigs mom, she says, bye guys, you need to go live on your own. And so they go build their own houses made of straw and sticks and bricks 
But one day that little pig that built his house of straw was at home cooking and he heard a noise. We knew it. He didn't think it was too great because he looked scared. And we found out it was the big bad wolf. And he was telling the pig to let him in. But that pig said, no, no, not by the hair on my chinny chin chin. So that wolf said he was going to huff and puff and blow his house in, and that's exactly what he did. But the pig was fast enough to run away and run to his brother's house made of sticks. And that wolf followed him, and the two of the pigs were inside all scared. And that mean wolf over there with his fist and his mouth open with his big teeth showing was saying, let me in. And they were saying, no, no, no. But he said, okay, I can blow. And he did. He blew their house down. And now look at him running away. And they run to their other brother's house. Does he look as scared as them? No siree. He looks pretty calm and confident in what he built his house out of. So the wolf comes and says, let me in. And this one says, nope, no way. Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. So then he said he'll huff and puff and blow the house down. But did he? No way, Jose, because look, he's out of breath over here. And the three little pigs are like, shooey, phew, he's gone. But then they hear a thump. Uh-oh. So they come up with a plan once they see that the wolf's trying to get in on the ladder. And their plan was to put a hot pot of water into the chimney. And he starts to come in. And he's coming a little closer. And then splash. Wow, look at his face. Does it look like he's enjoying that like a bubble bath? Uh-uh, I don't think so either. He looks like he's in pain. And then he hops up and he's grabbing his hiney and he runs and runs and runs and look how fast he's running. It even shows us the dirt that's kicked in the air. And then at the end of the story, we see those three little pigs are living their little merry life with no wolves chasing after them. Wow, what a story. So we learned that in our story, there are five characters, the three little pigs, the wolf, and the three little pigs' mother, right? And the setting changes from the beginning to the end. The very first house we see is actually their mom's house. And she's like, shoo, shoo, go on your own. And then they built their own houses. And there were three that were built, right? Straw, sticks, bricks. And then the wolf chases them, goes to those different houses. And at the end of the story, the setting ends at the brick house, right? Because that's the last house he tried and he couldn't blow it down. So they were all just hanging out there and the wolf got scared and burnt his hiney. So he ran away. So we're going to make a character trait chart. So I have made a chart with four of the characters. I did not put the pig's mom on here since she was just in our story for a very short time. But I put our characters, pig one, pig two, pig three, and the wolf on our chart. And I know it's a little tough to see that green. But next to it, I put actions and traits. So as readers, this is what we're doing in our brains, thinking about the characters, whether we realize it or not. We're thinking about what the characters are doing and how they are feeling and how they're reacting to their actions. So in our story, starting out, the very first pig makes his house out of straw. So that's his action. He built his house out of straw. And he also is a scared a worried kind of pig, right? Because the very first picture of him that we see when he's by himself, or I should say the second, but when he's by himself in his house over here, he looks worried. So that first little pig is a worried pig because he saw the wolf coming and I wonder if he knew that straw wasn't a very sturdy house. I don't know. But he also is a hard worker, right? Because he took the time to build his own house and get that straw. So for him, we could say that he's a worried little guy, but he's also hard working. Okay, 
And then what about pig number two? We said he built his house out of sticks. So I'm gonna put some sticks over here. And we see that he's also hardworking. He builds his house by himself. But he's also afraid. He's also worried about that big bad wolf because we see when the other pig comes to his house, the other brother, scared, he doesn't stand there confidently like that third one. He has his hand over his mouth like, oh boy, what did you say? You said he's chasing you? Okay, come on in. And those two come on in and look how worried they are. So we also say that the second little pig is worried. Okay. And then that third little pig, look how confident he is. He works hard. He gets those bricks for his house and he builds them. And he knows that those bricks are gonna be sturdy, right? So he's also hardworking. He's also smart to get those bricks. He's also kind, letting his brothers come into his house to save them from the big bad wolf. It's almost like he's protecting them, right? But then there's this character, the wolf. And the wolf, well, he tries to blow the houses down. This is the blowing wind that I'm drawing there. And he's mean. We can guess that maybe he wants to eat the pigs, right? He's not very nice. And his character trait stays the same throughout the whole story. He does not turn into a nice character. He thinks he's strong, but he's also pretty tired once he realizes, oh, I can't blow the brick house down. And he also is pretty clever though, because he even tries to get in through that house in a different way, right? Through the chimney with a ladder. So we can see that there are one, two, three, four characters that we've talked about, but all four of them have different actions throughout the story in different traits. So that's what helps us as a reader understand what the story is and understand us, help us understand the purpose of the story better. So you guys have done a really great job. I know it's a lot of talking with the mini lesson and you're just listening to me a lot of times, but you do a great job really understanding what we're doing and visualizing in your brain the stories that we're reading. So give yourself a roller coaster too. Ready? Click, click, click. Woo! Excellent job. And this is our last mini lesson with our, our big book for this week. Next week, we will start our fluency week where we will practice reading together in a book and on a poster and not sounding like robots. Okay, so keep up the great work friends. Have a great weekend and I will see you next week for our next mini lesson.